Coach Reram, I think, you know, we can say a lot more now. Uh, I think Paul wanted to just preview it. So tell us what we're looking at here. Certainly, yeah. We're going to take a closer look at the experimental microprocessor that Paul showed two days ago. What we have here, and we're disclosing for the first time, is the code name for this called Claremont. So Claremont is actually a Pentium class uh, experimental microprocessor that's capable of running very close to the threshold voltage of the transistors, just like how Shaker was, was explaining. And here, you saw it on day one running Windows, uh, and here it is running Linux, and it's capable of booting multiple operating systems, and here again you see the same funny cat animation. You're still torturing that cat. <laughs> uh, well, we're trying not to, but yes, I mean, yeah. So this is, this is basically the, the, the video of the Linux boot. Okay. You want to you wanna tell us more about sort of the electrical performance we're looking for? Certainly, I mean, yeah. So basically we are operating within a couple of hundred millivolts of the threshold voltage of the transistors. And here's the thing. We get about a 5x improvement in energy efficiency, like Shaker was saying, when operating at near threshold. And the power consumption is just a few milliwatts of power, allowing it to be powered off here again from the small solar cell powering the entire processor core. You know, people are, are already calling this the postage stamp processor <laughs> in the press. <laughs> One thing I want to clarify, you might be wondering, why only 5x? Because I said 8x earlier. I know, but you're, you're prone to exaggeration. <laughs> well, it's not exactly. The reason, there is a reason behind it. There is a okay. reason. We use an old core here. If you uh -huh. had started this design from scratch, we could have gotten an 8 to 10x improvement. But at uh, least this is a proof of concept. I see. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is actually a Pentium core. And I understand it's so old. It's so old. Makes me feel old when you say that. It's so old that you had a hard time finding Pentium motherboards. That's right, I mean, absolutely. And you actually went out on eBay looking for them? Yes, we did. I mean, you know, we were uh, try, literally dumpster driving, trying to find old boards that would work. <laughs> right. So here we are at the frontiers of computing, and we're looking in the dumpsters for motherboards. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, well, um, so we've seen how this um, how this is, you know, is working very close to threshold voltage, delivering that kind of actually dramatic increase, 500% increase in, in energy efficiency, but uh, obviously running very slowly. I mean, the cat's not moving too quickly this morning. Uh, what do we do when we want that performance? How do we turn this into a speed One of the, for that, let's walk over to the second setup. Uh, basically, one of the capabilities of this technology is its ability to ramp up in frequency, ramp up at higher voltages to deliver the performance that the applications might be asking for. Here we have a second setup, and in this case we are running Windows, and in this case the processor is actually running 10 times faster than the, the case in the first setup where it was running at near threshold. Here you may have increased energy consumption, but you do get the performance on demand, emphasizing wide dynamic range capability of the microprocessor. So I, in fact, using that dynamic range, I see you're running a old version of Quake here. Exactly, yeah. Here's a Quake demo, and you can see that it, it could really benefit from the 10x improvement in performance that it demands. And, 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 and so it's very important. One other thing I want to add is in our research, we, got, we, we look for a wide dynamic range so you can get performance as well as energy efficiency. You can tune it in dynamically. Okay, well, we're going to talk more about that in just a, just a second. I think we should thank Sri Ram for an excellent demo. Thank you.